All right, so carrying on with this little uh, Lyasis series here. Sorry for the hold up. Uh, it's been a little bit unmotivated lately to do it, but I've got some cool stuff coming up, so I figured I would get this video out of the way. Uh, this is the Sabu Python, uh, which is Lyasis sabuensis. Uh, this is the smallest python in the Lyasis genus. Uh, it's another Indonesian species uh, found in the Lesser Sunda Islands, specifically on a tiny little rocky island called Sawu. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty small snake, like corn snake size. Uh, some of them can hit six foot, but more often than not, they're around the four foot mark. Uh, this is my smallest adult female. She's, well, she's had one clutch of eggs so far. Uh, just a small clutch. I think it was three, three good eggs. Let me see, he's got cool little white eyes. Uh, this is a kind of a rare little snake in the wild and in captivity. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the status is in the wild, but I know this first group that I got uh, out of Indonesia in 2013. They came, and then every year after that, uh, when anybody would order Sabu pythons on these lists, they would just send Maclot pythons. And I've noticed more recently any of the Indo lists that I've seen have not had Sabu pythons on them, so I'm not sure what's up with that. But the range is so tiny um, that I could see it being an issue for them. They got these cool little white eyes. Uh, but these are just wicked little python. One of the interesting things about these guys is they hatch like a... It's almost like a bright orange color. Some of them are more reddish orange. Uh, some of them are like a light yellowy orange. And you can see this female. The reason why I decided to show this female, even though she's my smallest one, uh, is because she's kept a ton of orange. And she's not young. Like, I got her in 2013, and at that point she was just starting to change from orange like she was I don't know a year and a half old maybe two years uh, but you can see she's still got a ton of orange on her which is kind of neat and these guys are pretty well the same as the rest of the liasis uh, once you get them established the feeding response is very strong so you don't got to worry about that I've never really had any issues with respiratory infections or shedding problems. Especially these guys too because even though they come from kind of a tropical area, uh, it seems to be a little bit, not arid, but real dry and rocky. So that's likely why you never have any shedding issues or anything with them. They're just pretty hardy all around. And I keep these guys pretty well the same as the rest of them. Uh, 80, 82, roughly during the day. Uh, they have a basking spot of 88 degrees. And then at night, during the summertime, same thing, I drop it down to like 77 degrees. And in the wintertime, where the Sabus sit, uh, they're kind of by a, like a stairwell that leads to a door. So they can get, you know, 67, 70 degrees at night in the winter time. And this species can be a little bit difficult to breed, uh, but I think you just have to have established adults. Like I bred, it wasn't this last season, but the season before, uh, I produced two clutches of them. And they were, it was kind of a weird time of year, like it was getting closer to spring is when they bred. And then another, apparently these guys are also called a white eye python. Uh, I noticed when they hatch the eyes more of like an orange color. But you can see just how like whitish silver the eyes are. Got some little heat pits down there. Uh, they're very, very closely related to a Maclot python. They're basically like a little mini Maclot. 
but yeah super easy to keep like honestly the perfect pet especially if you're in a you know ball pythons or something and you want something that's a little bit different but still you know manageable in size whereas most of the other ones can get fairly large uh, this is a good option even as a starter snake like if they weren't so rare they would be they'd be a great beginner snake for somebody uh, although the babies Typical liasis, the babies can be little savages. But you get them past that first year and then they tend to mellow out a little bit. Uh, I'm currently working with three pairs of them. I've got, well, two male and three female regulars and then I have an exanthic male, uh, which you may have heard people refer to them as silver sabus, uh, but that's what it is basically, it's just exanthic so you don't get any of the the oranges or browns or reds in there it's just like a silver and black snake and i would show you but my male he's like pretty high black and he's in shed right now so he basically just looks like a regular sabu at the moment but yeah so cool and he's the only captive bred one i have all the rest of these ones were wild caught imports um, and not one of them is aggressive like I have one male that's a little bit defensive going in there but otherwise the rest of them are real chill um, you know typical python in general obviously you know when you go into the cage they can be a little bit spooked and defensive but if you go about it right mine don't even strike at you and I don't know if you can kind of see it's a fairly iridescent python too, just like the rest of the genus. Pretty muscular little things. Um, as far as housing, mine are currently in, uh, well they're in like steel racks, I don't know. They're three foot long tubs by I think 17 inches side to side. But I will be moving them into uh, four foot by two foot cages. I just, they like a lot of security, so I haven't wanted to bump them up quite yet. And I keep them, same as the rest, uh, coconut husk bedding. I've kept them on paper, I've kept them on cypress mulch, I've kept them on aspen shavings. They do pretty well either way. Uh, yeah, strong feeders. I feed all my guys either weaned or small rats. Uh, I feed them every two weeks. Depending on the time of year, like in the winter time, I don't really feed them much. Uh, mainly just because they're they're paired up, but. Yeah, and the eggs, clutch sizes, like I mean, this female, she had, like I said, it was either, I think it was three fertile eggs and a slug. And then my other female laid seven fertile eggs. So, I would assume that, you know, the average for these is probably like six to ten eggs maybe. And then I incubated them the same as all my other liasses. I did the same season. Uh, at the time I was doing 88 degrees. Uh, now I've even bumped it down to 87.3 is what I'm doing this year for everything. But yeah, they hatched real quick. It was about two months. Um, you know, real similar to breeding a ball python. And then the babies of these established real easy. Uh, I got them all established on either really hot frozen thawed pinkies or I think some of them I might have had to do live pinkies. But I've kind of noticed with a lot of these snakes, uh, I almost tend to have better luck establishing them on frozen thawed, just superheated, uh, because I can manipulate it a little bit better, I can bug them with it, twitch it back and forth, uh, and get them to strike. Whereas when you get a live pinky in a cage with a snake, it just tends to sit there or roll around, you know? Uh, another thing that I've done that's been kind of successful is putting the snake in a deli container with a live pinky uh, and then they're kind of forced to get irritated by that pinky and then they start striking at it and then once they figure it out they'll they'll usually wrap it and eat it. Yeah, 
super cool little snakes. And you didn't really see them. They were kind of disappearing. Like nobody was breeding them anywhere, really. Uh, and then, funny enough, uh, here I was, thought I was going to be cool. Uh, but then, same year that I produced, there was a handful of guys in the U.S., um, another fella in Canada here. Uh, we all got clutches, so that's good. See some captive bred stock of these guys before they kind of disappear. Yeah, I can't get enough of those eyes. The eyes are super cool. But yeah, I almost, I was considering doing even some line breeding with these maybe. Uh, I was going to hold them back. Like I've got, with my females, I have three kind of looks. I got this one that's retained a ton of orange. And then I have a female that's not an exanthic, um, but her color in general is just, silver she's really light gray and silver and then i have a, a jet black female which is more typical and i feel like that kind of comes with age too they take on a lot more black um and some of them just take on a lot more brown and almost end up looking like a maclot python but yeah awesome awesome little snakes and then i got that kind of white belly too which is cool that's actually the one thing like my exanthic male who like i said is not the nicest example of one like he's got a lot of black on top uh, but his belly is just snow white so that's kind of neat but yeah awesome little python uh you know on average four foot easy to keep keep them around 80 degrees eat just about anything you give them and just real uncommon and unique so hopefully I can get some babies this year from these guys I wasn't really trying too hard with them this year uh, I do have another female that I was pairing to the exanthic male but we'll see I'm not uh, I'm not too confident on that just yet but like I said, kind of spur of the moment video. I wanted to get this one out of the way before I have. I've got stuff hatching over the next few days and, and hopefully some really cool stuff being laid. So I'll be doing videos on those too. Um, but in the meantime, I figured I'd show you the Savu Pythons and get that out of the way. And we just may potentially do a Dunn's Python video to wrap up the whole Lyasa series. And uh, yeah, Savu Python. Hopefully we will see you guys in a couple days.